What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London. How are you all doing? I hope you're enjoying the weekend. And what was a beautiful Sunday, the sun has gone in, which I suppose that helps in terms of filming and me not squinting. However, I wanted to take the opportunity to try and do my first review on the Lamborghini. Now, this is a follow-up video to the idiot tour exterior and interior that I did last week. As I was watching back the footage, I was just like, I am an idiot. So, the paint code on the Lamborghini Gallardo is one of two. It could be Bianco Isis or it could be Bianco Mono Surus. Probably get up to my knee, up to my knee. I should have done some research on some of the specific buttons inside because thank you to all of the comments, tweets and Instagrams that people have been sending me on how to get open to the memory card and also how to do the boot and etc etc etc. Now I have done some Google research into this car so I can talk with a little bit more knowledge up in here. I hope it's still stored up here. Um, and then we're going to go for a drive and I'm going to talk to you a little bit how this car drives, what the performance is like, how it feels on the road in and around town but also on some country roads. So let's start with the exterior of this car. As I've mentioned before this is the Bicolore Special Edition and I know that I'm talking and pronouncing it phonetically but I am not Italian so I don't particularly know how it's supposed to sound. Now this car, again, phonetically, the paint job is Bianco Monsurus, which I tried to work out in the Idiot Tour. So it's gloss white and that matches the roof, which is in Nero Noctus, which matches the central basil inside, which also gives you the Sport Corsa and automatic mode. Scorpius wheels, which you also see on the Mark 1 Superleggera. So there you go, there's the knowledge. Scorpius and also the confirmed paint codes. What's also unique to the Bicolori Special Edition is the gloss black painted front uh, splitter. And if we quickly go around to the back, the rear is painted in gloss black. LP560 facelift of the Gallardo came out and was launched at the 2007 Geneva Motor Show and was styled after the inspiration of the Lamborghini Reventon, which was created to spice up the Murcielago and the LP640. Now, the coolest fact about the Bicolore Special Edition in itself was when it was launched, it was the last Lamborghini to be launched before the Lamborghini Aventador that came out in 2012 at the Geneva Motor Show. And to the European market, it only came as an LP560-4, but in America, the Bicolore Special Edition comes as a Dash 2, which means rear wheel drive, after the Valentino Balboni Special Edition, which I personally think would kill me. So when you open the driver's door, you get greeted by a whole host of leather and white stitching, which is unique to the Bicolore Special Edition. If you had a yellow car, you would have matching yellow stitching. If you had an orange car, you would have matching orange stitching. However, if you wanted the gray, you'd have to deal with the white stitching. Inside, it's very similar to that of LP560s that you may have seen, or even satin. Very similar center console, very basic steering wheel with no buttons to distract you. You've got the e-gear paddles here, which I'm gonna to touch upon when we start driving. But what's unique to this car as well, we've just mentioned, is the Nero Noctus, Nero Noctus center cap, which hosts the Sport automatic and Corsa button. Now, if we're gonna do a quick interior tour and review of the Lamborghini, I will say that seats are very comfy. I have been doing some relatively long journeys recently. Over the last three weeks of ownership, I have done just under 300 miles. I'm doing my best to keep the mileage down, but as well, I can't help but wanna drive it because it is utterly fantastic. One question, or I got quite a lot of questions actually on Twitter about whether this car has cup holders. Um, and unfortunately, the answer is no. The Italians um, don't like you drinking when you're driving, which I suppose is fair enough. What does this car offer in terms of storage? We have one little pocket here, which doesn't fit a phone. Well, kind of does actually. Pretty useless nonetheless. And as far as that storage goes, we've also got the rear shelf here, which isn't that spacious. The glove box, I don't even know what's in the glove box, is absolutely full with this. Oh, this is cool. The Lamborghini handbook. So that is the only thing that fits in the glove box. 
We've got some interesting facts to cover about this specific car, but what I want to show you is the key. Now the design for the Lamborghini key looks quite odd and you think, why has it got this little shark's fin here like that? As you put it in to the ignition, you will also see that it works out to be a perfect finger handle, I suppose is the best way of saying it. We will let this beep, which is the standard startup procedure. And then look, it is just a perfect handle. And there we go. We are now ready to get a move on. And immediately what you probably see is the fact that this is near enough the width of my hand. So that is the sort of visibility you get from the side. Now across the front, you have a long sweeping dashboard, which is very, very deceptive as you're drive deceptive as you're driving because the nose finishes not that much further from the interior of this car. It's very swooping dashboard, which is pretty cool, but it also, when the sun shines on it, it reflects against the angle that the windscreen is at because the windscreen is literally almost horizontal. So the way in which you start moving off is you put your foot on the brake, click the right paddle up and you automatically go into first gear, handbrake down, take your foot off the brake and you won't move forward, you won't roll. It has got hill assist, I think. Feels like it has anyway. And then all you do is you put your foot on the accelerator and you slowly begin to find the biting point electronically thanks to the E-gear transmission. It's a semi-automatic gearbox, it's not fully automatic, but you do have an automatic setting here. So for the questions asked on Twitter, yes, it is now in auto, which means you don't have to change gears with the paddles. What I'm gonna do now is demonstrate the first automatic default setting of the car, which is normal mode. That's what I call it, normal mode. I've also got it in automatic, which will, uh, well, automatically change gear for me. As you can see, I'm pulling away now. There's the gear change. So it's really smooth, quite difficult to get used to to begin with, but as you do start learning a little bit more about the gearbox on this car, it's actually very, very easy. Now, as you will see from this road, the suspension is incredibly stiff. I'm currently in automatic third gear. I'm cruising, it's not that comfortable. <laughs> but the gear shifts are actually very easy and go unnoticed. A very good feature of this car is when you're stuck in traffic, this car, after an allotted amount of time, will go into neutral for you and beep at you, telling you that you're in neutral, which is good, because if you stay in first gear too much, then you will start wearing the clutch up a little bit quicker than if you were to just be sitting in neutral. So I'm trying to get into the habit of immediately putting it into neutral at every set of traffic lights so that I'm not wearing the clutch out and not treating the car poorly. Now, another thing about treating the car poorly is that there is a sort of unwritten procedure that you have to do when you're driving this car. And that is when it's cold, for the first 10 to 15 minutes, you have to allow the car to warm up properly. Now, this needs to be done pretty much on all high performance vehicles. So that the engine is running at its optimum when you start putting your foot down and pushing on a little bit. Now it's all well and good me talking about how good this car is at slow speeds, in and around town, but also on the motorway. Almost becomes a bit of a GT car on the motorway. Eats up the miles, becomes very comfortable, very manageable. And Lamborghini actually improved the fuel efficiency and CO2 emissions on the LP560 facelift, as opposed to the Gallardo, by 18%. And the combined MPG reached 18 miles to the gallon, which is pretty impressive for a 5.2 litre V10. Interestingly, it beat the Audi R8, which had the same engine, and Audi could only get 15 miles to the gallon, which is seriously good from Lamborghini and shows that they're actually thinking about fuel efficiency, which is what I like. So we take it out of automatic and put it into sport, and you get that beep which now means that it is ESP Sport, which I suppose reduces the traction a little bit, speeds everything else up, and also gives me a lot better throt <laughs> throttle response. Opens up the valves as well, as you can hear. And this is below 4,000 RPM. And this is when you start getting towards the figures that Lamborghini claim on this car. 3.7 seconds, 0 to 60 top speed of 202 miles an hour 
and takes under 12 seconds to get to 125 miles an hour from zero. to shift and it screams at you whilst doing so. Whilst we're in sport mode I'm going to quickly talk about what I feel changes in this car when I click that button. One, it beeps at you horrendously. Two, the valves open and the V10 just starts barking at you and it is a real change as opposed to the normal mode that I tend to drive around town in most of the time. What also happens is once these valves open and the car becomes a lot more shouty and sporty, the fuel starts to diminish pretty quickly, which I'm absolutely fine about. The smiles per mile in this car once you put it into sport mode are second to none. The valves start opening at about two and a half thousand RPM, I think, and it is just, it, it becomes a completely different car. So as we come to a red light, let's just touch upon the attention this car gets and how awkward it makes me feel, especially sat at lights like this talking to myself and a camera. Now, I can see two people taking pictures in the traffic behind. There is also a car that is definitely looking at this car and it's one thing that I never really thought of. Even back in the day when I was filming cars, I just loved them for the looks and also the sound of these cars, but I never thought about the attention that it got until I bought the R8. And when I bought the R8, I was like, okay, this car gets quite a lot of looks. Surely a white Lamborghini, a car that I see quite regularly in London, isn't gonna get too much more looks. How wrong was I? This car gets a lot of phone cameras out. It gets a lot of people talking. It's a lot of jaws on the floor, which is a fantastic feeling when you're driving this car and you know that you're creating a memory for them from that time that they saw a white Lamborghini drop it down again and boot it! <laughs> One thing I've realised on this car as I take it out of sport and engage coarser mode is yes, this car is an absolute brutal V10 angry ball, exactly what you would expect from a Lamborghini. There's no denying that this characteristics of this car are very Lamborghini. Now Corsa mode is a mode you don't want to be driving in every single day because what you are probably about to see is the fact that to get 40% quicker shifts on this car, you have to take away a little bit of the comfort. <laughs> and it begins to eat tarmac a lot quicker than it used to. Now overall, this car, how is it to drive? You always have to have two hands on the steering wheel when you are thinking about putting your foot down. You also have to look so far ahead. Whereas the R8 had the 420 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in just over 4.2 seconds, this car is that much quicker that you really need to be even more on the ball, making sure that there is nothing gonna be happening before you take it up to the speed limit as quick as possible. Those gear shifts are so fast. It's absolute madness. It really feels like a double clutch gearbox in terms of its speed, not so much in terms of how smooth the gear shift is, so let's talk about the handling of the Lamborghini LP560. Now this is something that a lot of people talk on in Lamborghinis as a whole, as a car that is designed to understeer based on the four wheel drive system. What is it like to drive? It's very similar to the Audi R8, just stiffened up. That's the best way that I can describe it. So the steering, slightly heavier, which makes it a little bit more direct when you're coming into a corner. You feel like you're in control of the car a little bit better, which I really enjoy. Gearbox, I've got nothing to fault it. Now, I'm no sort of seasoned car reviewer. I haven't tested every single car that's got a double clutch gearbox, or I haven't tested every car that's got an automatic single clutch gearbox. But overall, I can't fault it. I have got used to it over the last three weeks, which has probably helped, but in general, 
I just think it is a lot of fun to drive. You can use the paddles when you want. You can also stick it into automatic mode and it becomes very easy and usable on a day-to-day -day basis. When you want to shift, the paddles are the best way to go about it. And here we go. We've got some tight little twisty rows now and the steering just is a lot of, it just, it gives you that sense of that you're doing it. There's no, there's no computers. It doesn't seem like there's computers that actually are steering the car for you or helping you at all. Even when I'm driving in sport mode in the wet, the car sometimes likes to kick its back end out a little bit and squirm under pressure, which I enjoy. And it's the same as the Audi R8. I got used to it. And you just have to be very awake when you're driving in that sort of mode. So we've touched upon quite a lot of elements of the car. We've touched upon the interior, how easy it is to use, also what lack of storage space there is. We've talked about the four-wheel drive system and we've talked about the different advancements. Advancements? And we've talked about the developments that Lamborghini created for the LP560 facelift as opposed to the Mark I Gallardo and what a huge difference it makes to this car. It turns it into a different league of vehicle. When you're thinking about the competitors, the R8 V10, potentially the 458 and the McLaren 12C, yes, They've got the double clutch gearbox, the R8 is still on the R-Tronic. But the one factor that you need to think about is this car is better on fuel than any of them, which is the best statistic to win by, in my mind. <laughs> I just like it, I, I don't know why. I'm just interested in fuel economy, which is crazy because I'm driving a 5.2 litre V10 Lamborghini. I really hope this video has come across in the way that I want it to come across. I have really struggled today. Normally, I'm quite good at talking to the camera and stuff, but there are gonna be a lot of outtakes to this video. I've been driving around now for about an hour and a half, and I'm gonna try and convert this into a 15 to 20 minute video. Why's that car got his reverse lights on? So I'm doing my best, I'm doing my best. I hope it's come across as a good video, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you have. Why's it still got his lights on? I'm right behind you, do not reverse. We could be seeing a Lamborghini crash in this video. <laughs> but anyway, please give it the thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and leave a comment on what you want to see more on this car. Do you want to see the exhaust? What color would you wrap it? Please let me know in the comment box below and I will do my best to film all sorts of videos around this car, around my Audi A1, but of course, continue with the daily vlogs, talking about and bringing you on my journey on what I'm doing on a daily basis. So thank you for watching. I appreciate all of your support as always, and I will see you tomorrow for another Supercars of London daily vlog. Cheers guys. Before I go, one last thing. I am going to be launching a monthly cycle running costs living with a Lamborghini video, which oh, I'm in neutral. <laughs> well, that was a good bit of the video. What I'm aiming to do is on the month anniversary of owning this car, which is the 2nd of September. So at the beginning of every single month, I'm gonna try and recap my expenditure, what it's like to live with this car, the general running costs, and if anything, fingers crossed, touch wood, nothing goes wrong, but if anything goes wrong, so that you guys get a very well-rounded, I, I suppose, insight into what it's like to own a Lamborghini, because it's one of the things that I really wanna do with this car is just, try and find out as much as possible about what it's like to live with. See you later guys. Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a very angry, cold Lamborghini.